Today I'm doing an AI coding agent platform showdown. I'm gonna compare three different platforms on the same task and see which one can build me the best travel planning map application. It's a really simple app, but it's also really cool and I think you're gonna like it. The three platforms I'm testing are Klein using Olama and DeepSeek running locally, the Gemini CLI, and Uwear, which is an online community-driven coding platform. Uware is sponsoring this video, so I'm certainly hoping that one turns out the best, but I'm not totally sure. However, I will definitely link the final result from that platform down in the video description, so you can go check it out, and you can sign up and start building stuff yourself on Uware for free. I do hope to convince you that Uware is a cool way to build applications using some of their MCP integrations, but I'll demonstrate that a little bit later in the video. You can use the timestamps to skip around as you like, but we're starting starting with Klein. So I've got some folders ready to go. And if I look at Olama and list my models, I've got a whole bunch to choose from. And I'm gonna be using DeepSeek R1 8 billion. So to get this started, I'm gonna open up VS Code and I'll come down to my Klein extension. And I'm just gonna make sure it's configured properly. So we wanna use Olama, DeepSeek R1 8 billion is selected. And I'm gonna make sure I'm using the correct context window, which is 128,000. And for the timeout, I'm gonna set this really high. So right now this is set at 1,000 seconds, and this should give us enough time to do anything we want. Actually, I'm just gonna say 3,000, 4,000, sure. I wanna set that really high. So here's my um, prompt. The task is to build a web application that picks a random place in the world and plans out a full itinerary for a three-day trip for me. I want to see this on a map with pins on the left side and a day by day itinerary of the travel on the right. So Klein's gone ahead and they sort of bundle it into this task using XML tags. Uh, and if I go back to my uh, system and I look at NV top, and then I'm also going to do Olama PS. So we can see this model is loaded. Check it out. It's 37 gigabytes which means I'm exceeding my memory, like my total memory on my computer. So I'm, I'm having to dig into swap, I'm pretty sure. If I look at HTOP, my swap memory is at 13 gigs. And if I come back to VS Code, we can see that this is working away. Um, and while it works, we're gonna go on to the Gemini um, aspect. Okay, so for Gemini, I have a different folder and I'm gonna spin up the Gemini CLI. So I'll fire in the exact same prompt and you'll see that I'm on Gemini 2.5 Pro. And so let's see how long this, this can go before it asks, it sort of will eventually downgrade us. Okay, so it's already downgraded us to Gemini 2.5 Flash. And all it's done so far is kind of install a few packages. It kind of has a, a bit of a plan, but it hasn't actually really implemented much of that. Let's see what it's got. So it created this trip planner folder and it's got a whole bunch of stuff in here. There'll certainly be a lot of node modules. Oh wow, it's really going going for it. Okay, so that's one thing about Flash, right? It works super fast. It's a React project, no big surprise there. And while this is building, I'm gonna check on VS Code. So DeepSeek is outputting a lot of thoughts. It's gonna create a plan for us, but if I look at the, the folder, okay, so it's just started to build out an index. And just the fact that it is, you know, creating this file means it's able to properly call Klein's tools, which a lot of local models struggle with. And that's why I recommended using this DeepSeek R1 8 billion. Okay, so coming back to Gemini, hmm, I wonder if it's stuck. It's been doing this for like 200 seconds, so a few minutes on this constructing feature data. What I'm gonna do is give this a shot. Okay, so here's what it's done for us. Um, this is pretty rough. It looks like you got stuck somehow and stopped working. Can you pick up where you left off and complete this? And sometimes Gemini forgets uh, the task. And I'm just gonna re-paste that. And it's doing a Google search. API for random city or place. All right, so while that works, let's go back and see how we're doing over on Klein. So we're building out some styles. I don't see any styles. It just says CSS content in square brackets. It did do our whole container. Wait, no script should be in. <laughs> it's, it's starting to dump its thinking into the index file. Meanwhile, Gemini is also struggling. 
Now that Map.js and CSS are created, I'll integrate. Okay, this is good. So they seem to be doing something with the map. Just kind of gave up. That's fine. I don't need it to run it. I'm going to run it. And let's see what we got. I don't see any sort of buttons on here. I guess we could give it one more shot. Also, there's no map. Okay. And I'm going to give one last check over on VS Code before we go to Uware. It's still trying to deal with this CSS file. All right then, and it looks like this mm, tried to do something. All right, so we're getting a few different options, but there's still no map. That's pretty frustrating. There's no map of the locations. It's, so, it's still hung up on the port. Yes, use 3001, go for it. I don't know. Okay, so I'm pretty much giving up on these guys. Uh, so let's go to Uware and see what this can do. So the deal with Uware is it's looking to be kind of like a fun place where people can build and share AI applications with each other. All right, so here's some random zany looking thing. Look at this. Oh my God. Whoa, whoa, wild. There's a super cool community thing going on with this, right? Where you can kind of give people reactions and you can save stuff and comment and all that. But what I wanna show you is, are these MCP tools. For now, I'm just gonna paste in the same raw prompt that we keep using. And the first thing I wanna show you with Uware is how it has this auto complete for like, while well, you're writing your prompt, um, which I think is like really awesome. I think more tools like Cursor would really benefit from having this. So what will it do? Include a user-friendly interface. Yeah, maybe I wanna do that, uh, but I'm not gonna utilize that. I wanna send the same prompt. So this is like a fair comparison and I'm gonna fire that off. So when you sign up for a free account here, you'll get like 300, 500 credits, whatever that means, but it's definitely enough to do everything that we're about to do in this video. So check out the first thing that it's doing. It has this to-do list. And this is something I noticed Cursor doing. I first noticed this with Claude Code, and it's definitely one of those like go-to agentic patterns, which we've seen emerge where we're gonna interpret the user request and then we're gonna create a to-do list and then we're gonna continuously reference back to this to-do list um, as we go. So this is kind of like how I would describe a first-class tool for coding agents. Other tools we have are web search. This has become like a standard tool. So we can see some stuff here. Uh, map with pins, that's this one here. Itinerary. Okay, generate random trip, let's do it. All right, so this is putting me in New York. What else do we got? Okay, got a little London plan. That's cool. Got a Thailand, a Thailand option. So honestly, this is way better than I thought for an initial attempt, but there's a lot of room for improvement. And the first thing I wanna do is make this a little more attractive. It's, it's honestly pretty good, but uh, we have this huge icons MCP tool. I just wanna demonstrate this. Uh, I'll just say add icons, pretty lame prompt. And here it is. Okay, huge icons, MCP tool triggered. And it's definitely a really simple app. Like this is not a React app as far as I can tell. We, well, we have this index.html, it keeps editing. Okay, looks like it's done. And I'm pretty excited for this. Yeah, so we, we got a little, little few little icons here. And yeah, now this list is a lot more digestible. I don't know about you, but these clearly aren't random. So I wanna inject some true randomness into this. And this is to me super cool. There's this AI app MCP tool, which Uware has, and this is a new feature. So I'm gonna say, make this into an AI app, truly random and unique travel plans. So what this tool does, this AI app MCP tool, is it builds AI into the app itself. Um, and the super cool thing that Uware does is it's gonna charge the user for these AI, this AI use. It's kind of equivalent to the user being able to input their own API key, except for they don't need to you know, be a developer or be familiar with how to generate API keys and give their credit card and so on. They just have to be a user on the Uware platform and then they can use their credits to access your AI features. It definitely evokes that kind of like slot machine mentality, these no code platforms. Here we go. Okay, so it's giving me some some choices now. I'm hiking. It recommended an unknown location. So it looks like it's done a pretty extensive 
Queensland, New Zealand, and this is rendering as markdown here. The map coordinates um, don't seem to be aligning. Make it dark theme. Oh boy. Okay, we're gonna get nice. Dial definitely looks a lot better. Now, it has put me in Africa. It's talking about Japan. Let's have a look at what this code is. Okay, let's see. If I go to my downloads and it was called source underscore code. So here's the project. And like, again, I just love how simple it is. So we're using leaflet. Here's the huge icon stuff. And then this is the UWare SDK. And here's the UWare AI right here. UWare AI SDK, open AI. Uh, okay, so then we have a bunch of style stuff. The style is included right in the index. Again, keeping things super simple. And down here we have the leaflet. This is like our map, but we've got a bunch of UWare stuff um, for their a for their SDK. This is obviously a pretty difficult problem because the model has to get back and parse the correct location which you know it's it is a it is a location it's just not the correct location for some reason so um, i'm gonna try again build a web app that allows me to pick a location on a map and get a custom travel itinerary a dark mode by default app let's do it Oh, I notice it requires interactive mapping. This needs the Google Maps MCP tool. I have a Google Maps tool and now it's selected. Okay, so let's say continue uh, with Google Maps. Nice, here it is, Google Maps MCP tool. Oh boy, here we go. Wow, okay, well let's hike, I don't know, around here. One error, geocoding re request failed. The AP key is not authorized to use this. Um, yeah, okay. Shit, that's not gonna work. Actually, I'm just gonna click this fix button. Let's see what it does. I like that that quick like interface, just being able to click that button. That's pretty satisfying. Yeah, so I don't have an API key permissions. Okay, so this is reportedly been fixed. Oh, location selected, Africa get out of here do some let's do some south vietnam exploring and i'm gonna i'm gonna do some hiking down here and let's see what we can do oh here it is this is awesome ho chi minh city yeah so it's literally working i'm I, I'm, I'm actually like i'm actually blown away by this this is wicked to me um i want to go to japan let's do some hiking down here let's do some moderately moderate hiking and food of course sumaya city check this out places looks awesome i want to go here anyway matsumaya castle insider tip arrive early okay let's ship this travel itinerary generator i'm gonna publish it and publish successfully nice okay now it's called zazen codes project maybe i want to give it a better name okay cool ai adventure generator some slug save that all right settings were saved so now if i come back to my account ai adventure generator and if i click on that yeah i got my custom slug here it does have some extra stuff at the end for to ensure it's unique uh, but that's cool so i'll share this with you guys and you can check it out and the last thing i'm going to do is just download this i'm going to throw this inversion control for you so I've got this three UWare. Okay, cool. So I just threw all the code here. Um, so you can you can have a look at this and see what UWare is built. So this is similar to like a Claude MD deal, and it's kind of telling UWare like what is going on here, how this app works. So this will be like the first thing it reads every time it wants to edit your project. And here's our prompt. So we have generated a three-day travel itinerary for location. We've got some other stuff we can add. And we're doing a lot of work here with JavaScript to like do replacements. Oh, this is neat. So here's a little helper script so that we can get the like region based on the coordinates. Awesome. Um, the to-do list is just some JSON stuff. And then we have this manifest, which tells us our model and some other stuff like a system prompt. I'll put that on GitHub and you can check out all of this code. In fact, you'll be able to see all of the code we generated today for this video. And I'll leave a link to this actual app if you wanna go ahead and uh, give this a shot. So that's all I have for you today. 
Thank you for watching. And if you've got this far, please leave me a like to show your support. I'm teaching AI engineering here on YouTube and this video was admittedly a little bit more fun. So if you're still watching, uh, the last thing I'd encourage you to do is subscribe because it seems like you like what I do around here. And every week I put out a new video where my goal is to teach you AI engineering. So I'm gonna leave two related videos and if you have some time, you can check one of those out. Thank you for watching and namaste.